is Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Smart watches, a medical perspective. You know, as a physician with 35 years of experience, I'd like to give you my perspective on the life-saving features of your smart watch. Now, you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like. And if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. Let's get on with the show. You have two watches on the screen. The one on the left is worth $30. The one on the right, 300 Which one should you buy? My recommendations are on medical facts, not consumerism. Claims of health benefits are driven by companies selling the products. This is why you get a very odd response when you bring your ECG done by your watch in to see your physician. This is about to change, however. Here are the three takeaway messages I want you to get from this video. Why purchase a smart watch? Which one should you buy? And what features should you look for? Let's look at the medical facts. In this picture, you'll see on the left, cataracts. As we get older, we can't see as well. So our eye lenses wear out and often require surgery to correct this. On the right hand side you'll see arthritis. We have arthritis in our knees and our hips. Again we need surgery to correct this and we get new joints. Our heart also ages and can have problems, particularly with the electrical system. Your heart can start to slow down or it can speed up. If it slows down too much you can have problems with consciousness. This can often lead to a disastrous result causing loss of consciousness and an accident. Now, in the diagram here, you'll see a terrible car accident. No, actually it's not. This was just some high school students staging a scene for impaired driving. But certainly, as a senior, we could be in a position where we're driving, our heart rate gets too slow, and we could lose consciousness. Oftentimes, you need a cardiac pacemaker. So let's look at the incidence of this. If we look at the graph here on the right hand side, you'll see that if you are 60 years old, there is actually an exponential curve going up showing the incidence of pacemaker insertion. This is a very common problem. And if you reach the age of 80, there is a very good chance that you may require a pacemaker. Let's look at what happens when your heart rate speeds up too fast. This could be atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the fifth cause of stroke. Again, let's look at the incidence. If you are 60 years old, let's look at the graph. It goes up exponentially. The same graph as with the slow heartbeat, it can go too fast as well. It's part of the aging process and we need to be on top of this because we can either be in a fatal car accident or we can have a lifelong stroke to deal with. So let's look at how smart watches can help us with this. All right, there are three watches that stand out above all the others because they have an advanced cardiac feature. They have the ability to do an ECG. So what does this mean and why is it important? The watches are the Apple Watch Series 4 to 6, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, and the Fitbit Sense. So what makes these watches unique is that they can actually diagnose a cardiac complication called atrial fibrillation. Now, they're, you're not constantly monitored. It's not constantly measuring your heart. But if you feel a bit weird, you get some palpitations, you feel a bit dizzy, then you can touch your watch in a certain way, and it does at what we call an ECG. But the most important thing about this is it actually interprets the ECG and tells you if you have atrial fibrillation. This feature is FDA approved and has been validated to be an excellent service. So it gives you an interpreted electrocardiogram. Only these three watches. Let me show you my ECG. Here is my ECG that I did just yesterday, and in this it shows, of course, who I am, it shows my age, my heartbeat was 81 beats per minute, and it tells me that I had what we call a normal sinus rhythm. So it means, what really that means is, is I don't have atrial fibrillation, and that's really all these watches do, tell you if you do have atrial fibrillation 
or you don't. To review that again, there are the three watches that have the advanced cardiac diagnostic feature, and that's the Apple Watch, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, and the Fitbit Sense. Now let's look at all the other watches that, that are out there, the smart watches, the $30 smart watch versus the $300, all right? They will all do your pulse, and they will all tell you if your pulse is too slow, if your pulse is too fast, and all the watches monitor your pulse on an ongoing basis. So it's a 24-7 sort of thing. So if your heart is too slow, your watch is going to tell you, hey, your, your pulse is a little slow here, and maybe you need to see your doctor because it may mean a pacemaker. Let's say your pulse is too fast. Maybe you've got some palpitation. Suddenly your heart kicks in. It's going too fast. Well, you don't have the advanced cardiac features on there, but it's giving you a warning, and then you can get into your doctor, and they can do a proper electrocardiogram and make the diagnosis. So remember, let's monitor your pulse. Monitor your pulse. So important. Too slow or too fast. The Samsung Watch 3 is FDA approved to measure your blood pressure digitally. It does it accurately and has been certified. You're going to be seeing this feature come out on a lot of watches this fall. Do I think it's worth spending $300 to specifically buy a watch to measure your blood pressure? I don't. I think it's a great feature to promote interest in your blood pressure and if it stimulates conversation with your physician and you become more interested in your blood pressure, that is a good thing. But measuring it with a $50 um, unit that you put around your arm is fine and see no advantage in um, having a watch do this or do I think that you should spend the extra money. Oxygen saturation. <laughs> this is not FDA approved. The results are terrible, uh, highly variable, and you should be extremely wary when using this feature on a watch. Emergency notification. Very important. It is available, of course, on the um, Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 and, of course, the Apple Watch. It is not available on the Fitbit Sense. I think this is a good service. However, you must remember, you have to have the watch on for this to work. We'll talk about that next. Fall detection. Fall detection is available on the Apple Watch and Samsung Watch as well. You must remember, though, in order for fall detection to work, the watch has to be on your wrist. So the problem with a watch is twofold. First, it has to be taken off to be charged. And then, of course, you have to put it back on and you have to wear it through the night. So if you're not going to wear the watch through the night or you can't remember to put it back on, you should look for another solution to fall detection. And then there are a lot of other features of smartwatches. I'm not going to cover those in this video. This video is primarily for the medical features of smartwatches. In January of 2020, this research group from the Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology made a discovery. They were able to measure your blood sugar without bodily fluids. They did this through a type of laser technology. What this meant was we would now be able to measure your blood sugar without actually having body fluids. It was only one year till the people involved in making watches were able to combine this technology into watches. This is truly the holy grail because with 30 million Americans having diabetes, the savings of this technology over the next three years could be 90 billion dollars. So what's coming? Well, there is big money to be made here. The Apple Watch 7 will be released mid-September. The release date is already indicated and this will indeed have blood pressure monitoring and blood sugar monitoring. Then let's look at Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, which is also rumored to have blood sugar monitoring. Not sure yet about this Fitbit Sense. But this clearly is a huge development, and whoever gets it right is going to run away with the Holy Grail. But let's see what happened this week. 
Well, I had all my slides ready to go. I had my presentations ready, and we were all ready for the new watches to come out. But what happened last week tore the whole thing apart. Two huge announcements were made. The first was Samsung Galaxy watches would be discontinuing their Tizen operating system. All these Samsung watches, which were the closest to the Apple Watch, ran on the proprietary Samsung software called Tizen. T-I-Z-E-N. They announced this week they would be discontinuing that software and they would be using the Google Wear operating system. Ooh, what's going on here? And the second thing that blew me away was, of course, Google. Google, of course, purchased Fitbit. We all have Fitbits. We know the Fitbit operating system, but it is proprietary. Well, they're now discontinuing that on all their Fitbit line and they're going to Google Wear as well. So what does this mean about watches from Google and Samsung? Lots of rumors going on right now. I've heard that Samsung Watch 4 will not be coming out. Then another rumor is they have already produced warehouses full of these watches. No idea. It's, it's constantly changing. Okay, so where do we go with this? And will Apple run off with the Holy Grail? I would like all seniors to be more vigilant in monitoring their pulse for it being too slow or being too fast. Most watches will do this and you don't have to spend a lot of money on the advanced cardiac monitoring features. This device made by AliveCar is called CardioMobile and is licensed by the FDA to do what the watches do. It does an ECG that is interpreted for the presence of atrial fibrillation. Unlike the watch apps, it can be used by multiple people. It connects to any smartphone and stores the ECG on your smartphone where it can be sent to your healthcare provider. This is the software that Apple used to develop the ECG on its watch and has been around for many years. There are two versions, one for $90 and the other for $150, but they both do the same thing. But the $150 one is a six-lead ECG. This can provide your physician with more medical information and is the preferred choice if your physician shows some interest. These devices are available on Best Buy or Amazon and often found on sale. Well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel to keep updated on this ever-changing watch story. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Have a great day.